In the beginning of 2020, I moved to Tokyo and Japan for a very exciting internship opportunity with Sony. Florian started working just, just beside me. The goal of this internship was to train an AI to race around the Gran Turismo track faster than any human. But suddenly, the COVID pandemic happens. I had to take all of my PlayStations home to my tiny apartment. In order to train the AI, I had to run multiple simulations of Gran Turismo Sport distributed over nine PlayStations. To make sure that my experiments got done in time, I was at least every hour checking if they're still on and still running. The PlayStations were running 24-7. They generated a lot of heat, they generated a lot of noise. I initially didn't worry that much about the, the electricity bill because this was all done by Sony. HR sent me an email. The electricity bill goes up sixfold. What is this intern doing in his apartment? What kind of strange things went on there? So my name is Michael Spranger. I am the COO of Sony AI. We started Sony AI to unleash human imagination and creativity with new AI technology. We are really focusing on AI as a tool, on the interaction between technology and humans. And that can be creators or, or gamers or people that are using the technology. It was important to build a global organization. We have offices in Tokyo, in Zurich, and a remote workforce in North America. One of the key goals of the organization is to build an environment, an organization that's ambitious, because smart people want to work on interesting and amazing projects. Being global allows us to choose the best talent from anywhere in the world. We were already designed to be a remote lab from the start. That wasn't something we chose to do because of COVID. So on that front, we were pretty well prepared. We already all use Zoom for everything. So Kenta Kawamoto-san started this as an under the desk kind of project, uh, essentially by himself and with a few interns, building racing agents for Gran Turismo. And I was always wondering whether we could scale that project. Could we build an AI that is able to beat the best Gran Turismo drivers in the world? And then in the fall of 2020, we really kicked off the project in a serious way. Florian's experiments set the foundation for the work that we did. So in March 2021, we set ourselves the deadline of trying to beat the world's best Gran Turismo racers. I saw their milestones for, for reaching this goal of beating the best human drivers in a direct head-to-head -head comparison. And I thought they were way too ambitious. What is intelligence? I want to create a system that is intelligent, like a human. Kenta is a really thoughtful AI researcher, and he was a crucial bridge to the makers of Gran Turismo, Polyphony Digital. Polyphony Digital is a game developing studio, and their product is called Gran Turismo Franchise and it's a racing simulation. Yamauchi-san's vision is very big. It's a very big game. 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 It's a very big The car dynamics is super realistic, so it's very hard to even stay on the course. If you're just going a little too fast, you spin out. It's really quite hard to be at that perfect level of control. The professionals, the people who are really good at this game, are bona fide experts at a very difficult task. Peter Stone is one of the most prominent reinforcement learning researchers on the planet, basically. And for us, it was very, very important to have that senior leadership in the team 
to be able to really drive the cutting edge. We trained Sophie through trial and error by running the agent over many, many trials. At the beginning, behaving sort of randomly. When should it accelerate? When should it break? First of all, you need to learn to drive in the right direction. Then you need to learn to avoid walls, not to go on the grass, for instance, because that's going to slow you down. And essentially, the same way you might train your dog a new trick, by giving it rewards and encouraging it to do the right thing more and more often, it eventually learns how to perform a complex task. And so we create the framework to allow the agent to teach itself. We don't want to just mimic the decisions other people made, right? We don't want to just mimic the best drivers. We want to go further, right? We want to be able to beat the best drivers. We're not directly training GT Sophie. GT Sophie is training itself. The more we learned about what it took to be a good race car driver, the more challenging and interesting the project became. What I thought at the beginning was driving really fast around the racetrack was something AI would be good at because it's kind of an optimization problem. How do we just get a little faster, a little faster all the time? But dealing with the other cars and the potential things that other human drivers might do that might be unexpected, that was a much bigger challenge and quite an interesting one. Pete Woman has, has had an amazing career in terms of the companies that he's built and the kind of technical contributions that he's made. For us in the project, he was a technical project lead, you know, leading the team through the technical and the research decisions. We decided to organize the teams around four different aspects. First, we had getting the best time trial performance we could get. That's driving alone, how fast can you get around the track? We had a second team focused on learning the skills you would need when racing against other drivers, like using the slipstream to pass a car in front of you, finding alternate paths through a corner if you want to make a pass. We set up a third team that was focused on the agent's actual internal architecture and what it took to race against other opponents. And then the fourth team was focused on the rules of sportsmanship. sportsmanship. Like, what does it mean to race fairly? You know, there's a sort of complicated and intricate interaction. It's maybe a little bit like a dance. Our initial approach was, let's get GD Sophie to drive faster than the fastest human when it's just by itself. And that was more of a sanity check for us. We started out just trying to race against the built-in AI in the game, which was a challenge for a long time, uh, but eventually we got really good at that. I think one of the greatest challenges was that we had no way to evaluate how GT Sophie would race against human drivers. Human drivers behave a little differently than the agent, so there was a lot of uncertainty about what would happen when we actually put the agent on the course with humans. Things kind of went a little awry from the start. It's lights out and we are underway. Literally, the start. It comes down towards the first corner. It's the top three GT Pro drivers who have the advantage. It's very stressful to watch the agent in an actual competition because it's moments away from a massive accident. We knew something was wrong. I wanted to leave and, you know, not talk to anybody. This problem is much harder than we thought. 